Welcome to the ITDVDs.com YouTube channel. This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. If you would like to see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Now let's begin the sample. It's definitely worth it to just confirm a few very important requirements before we go ahead and install Exchange. The first one is going to be to make sure that your domain and forest functional level are at least at Windows Server 2003. To do that, I'm on a domain controller, and I'm going to go to the Start menu, Administrative Tools, and I'm going to launch my Active Directory Domains and Trusts snap-in. First, to confirm our forest functional level, I'm going to right-click on my Active Directory Domains and Trusts and go to Raise Forest Functional Level. Now, this won't actually raise it. It'll just let us see what functional level it's at. You can see my forest name. My current forest functional level is Windows Server 2008 R2, so I'm definitely okay. It can be at Windows Server 2003, Windows Server 2008, or Windows Server 2008 R2. If it's at Windows Server 2000, then you need to bring your domain controllers up to Windows Server 2003 and then raise your forest functional level. And also with your domain, I'm just going to right click on my domain go to raise domain functional level and it lets you know the current domain functional level is at Windows Server 2008 R2 so I'm okay this also needs to be at Windows Server 2003 at least so it can be Windows Server 2003, Windows Server 2008 or Windows Server 2008 R2 in raising a domain or forest functional level uh, shouldn't be taken lightly because it's a, a major change that can have implications on your whole domain or your whole forest so you definitely want to back everything up, uh, plan when you're going to raise the functional level. It's not something you just want to go change real quick. So I'll go ahead and close out. So I'm looking good. The next thing I'm going to want to check is to make sure I've got a global catalog server at each site. So I'm going to go to Start, Administrative Tools, and launch our Active Directory Sites and Services. And you can see I actually only have one site, Phoenix. But if I had multiple sites, I'd want to make sure there was a global catalog server at any site that we were going to put an Exchange server. To check this, I'll just go ahead and expand out our site here, Phoenix, expand out our servers. And I can just right-click on the server, go to Properties. These are our domain controllers. And DC type, you can see it says Global Catalog. I can also expand it out, highlight NTDS Settings, right-click on it, go to Properties, and see global catalog is checked. Now I just need one, but I can take a look at my other domain controllers in this site, and I can see both of them are global catalog servers, so I'm in good shape there as well. And our global catalog servers do need to be Windows Server 2003 with Service Pack 1 at least. Ideally, the least you want to have is Windows Server 2003 with Service Pack 2, because Windows Server 2003 with Service Pack 1 is not generally supported anymore. So you at least want to get it up to a supported level, which is Windows Server 2003 Service Pack 2. And finally, let's check real quick to find out where our schema master is. We may already know, but if we don't know, I'm going to right-click on a command prompt, run it as administrator, and I'm going to type in the command netdom query slash domain, the name of the domain, which is itdvds.local, FSMO, and this is actually going to tell us all of the S FSMO roles and where they live. All of mine live on DC01. You can see the schema master here. Also a good idea to know where the other ones live, but the most important for the Exchange installation is going to be the schema master because when we go to prepare Active Directory and extend the schema, we need to run the program that does it from a server that is in the same site as the schema master which is DC01. Now I only have one site, but you may have multiple sites. And a lot of times we don't really need to know where the schema master is unless we're doing something like this where we're extending the schema.